And now, for the week of April 17th, Adobe Photoshop TV is on the air. Welcome to Adobe Photoshop TV from the National Association of Photoshop Professionals. And here's your host, the Photoshop guy, Scott Kelly, Dave Cross, and Matt Poskowski. All right, welcome to another maniacal episode of Adobe Photoshop TV, brought to you by the National Association of Photoshop Professionals, the fine, fine people who bring you Photoshop User Magazine. This week's episode is brought to you by the folks over at Logitech and their new New Look Navigator, also Digital Juice, CDW, and the fine, fine folks over at DLO.com. But We've got one more sponsor here. Dun, too. dun, dun. Yellow Machine, and it's a brand new sponsor. They make this cool little box. Terabyte. A, a terabyte. terabyte. It's like in a little, little box. box. It's very so, cool. Welcome to our new sponsor. Well, great, everybody. Well, welcome to another show. My name is Scott Kelby, and joining me after a triumphant tour <laughs> of his home country, back with us in the studio, we're very happy to have Mr. Dave Cross. And I'm very happy to be here. And as you can see, he got some new clothes while he Correct. was in Canada, which is an important, what's the, mo it's the main reason for him to go home is Basically. every six months he needs some new <laughs> wardrobe. And uh, representing the city of Brandon, Florida, <laughs> Thank please you. welcome Matt Kloskowski. It's good to be back from Brandon All right. as well. Well, hey, everybody, we have got an action-packed show for you today. But before we do, I want to just check with Mr. Cross. We missed you last week, and can you tell us a little about your, your, your triumphant Adobe Photoshop seminar awesome. tour? We actually had a great tour. We went to three different cities. In Toronto, we had over 500 people. In uh, Ottawa, we had about 350, and also Vancouver, 350. It was a great, great time, and, and had lots of people coming up and asking, when are we going to come to other cities in Canada, which the answer is... Next year. Next year. Friendly people? Very much so. It was awesome. Trip. Go to Tim Hortons? Tim Hortons, poutine, uh, lots hockey. of hockey. Hockey. Excellent. Sit for two of Molson. You know, <laughs> couldn't be better. It was the perfect trip. <laughs> it really was. Well, thanks to all our Canadian viewers for coming out and catching Dave up there. And uh, let's see. We've got uh, some giveaways today? We do. We've got giveaways. So uh, first off, we're going to give away a copy of Mr. Scott Kelby's right here, his iPod book. We're also going to give away a ticket to the Mac Live conference that's coming up in New York City, May 11th through the 13th at the Javits. Yep. And uh, we've got some other prizes. We're going to hold off a little bit, but we'll tell you about them a little bit later. Excellent. Very cool. Well, let's start off with uh, seeing what we brought this week. Uh, what did you bring for us, Dave? I have a little tip that talks about a very simple way to turn your type into a nice gold effect that you can reuse over and over again very, very easily. Excellent. I brought a tip, and my tip um, is, it's a tip that works in CS. It also works in CS2, but it's something that's been there for a little while. A lot of people don't know about it, but we've got some questions on the blog, so I'm going to show you how to use that. I've got that. Cool. And uh, I'm going to show you a tip on how to turn a photo into a sketch. So uh, I see a lot of the feedback emails that come in, and we get a lot of requests on that one. So it's actually a pretty, pretty cool little technique. And, uh, Sounds I got a little a couple, sketchy to me. It's a little sketchy. So. Oh, is this what you learned in Canada, this yes. kind of stuff? All right. Anyway, all right, we're going to start off with Mr. Cross because his joke was so good. Let's let <laughs> him start. How exactly. can you not start after such a quality <laughs> joke? Well, my tip is basically a very simple way, as I said, and all it is is using layer styles. Now, what I've done ahead of time is I've created a bunch of type layers. And as you can see, I have a bunch of different type layers because I want them all to be different sizes and pushed together and so on. So I'm just going to pick any one of them. I'll pick the big letter L since it's the easiest to see. And I'm going to just do two things. I'm going to first of all go to the layer styles pop-up menu and choose color overlay and choose my color. And I just want to pick kind of a semi-goldish color, but not worry about it too, too much. And then all I have to do at this point is just simply now choose bevel and emboss and just pick a few simple settings. I'm going to change the technique here to chisel hard and probably put the size up a little bit. And you can start to see if you look over at the L how it's starting to get that nice little shape. But the real key to this, the real way to make it look like gold is this area right in here that says gloss contour. This is a pop-up menu of choices and in here there's a whole bunch of interesting options and you just start choosing some of these and as you do look at that how I'm getting that nice reflected gold kind of look. I think I like this one right here. So I'm just going to click OK. So now I've got that effect applied to the one type layer but as you can see I have all these other type layers. So it's very very easy to do this. Now all I do is on the Macintosh I would control click on the Windows platform I'd right click and nicely out of my filming area is a little command that says copy layer style. So then once I've copied it, I simply click on the first of my layers, 
hold down the shift key and click on the other of my type layers. Now, if you were in CS, you'd have to link them together, but since it's CS2, I can just select them like this. Once again, control or right click, and this time choose paste layer style. And just like that, look at that. Now, all my type has been set up just the way I want. Now, that's basically the effect, but what we want to do to finish this off, to make sure we don't have to go through all those that work again, is right here in our styles palette, I now just click on this, uh, oops, I have to just take one layer, there we go. Click on this new layer style and call it my first gold style ever. No, you don't want to call it that, but something that will tell you this is your gold style. Click OK, and now it's there right in your styles palette. So if at any time you decided, for example, I wanted all these type layers to look like some of the lovely, lovely built-in ah, styles those defaults that are great. Adobe gives you that are just awesome mm, and you use beautiful. hardly ever. <laughs> But the important thing is then you have your layer style right there, so anytime you need it, it's ready to use. Well, excellent. Well, thank you, Dave. Excellent tip. And uh, I'm just going to roll right into mine. Uh, I've got a tip. Like I said, it was for CS and CS2 users, and it's a little bit different in that it's been there. Some people know about it, but I'm amazed how many people don't know about it, and that's the kind of stuff we like to do here on the show. So we're going to do that. Uh, we're going to start off by taking a look at this person right here, here we go. And uh, she has blue eyes, okay? Take a look, I'm gonna zoom in a little so you can really see they're blue. Yep, she's got blue eyes. And then right behind her, we have this woman who is, is upset at something and think it was Dave's joke. And <laughs> I wouldn't blame her. <laughs> I wouldn't blame her. And, uh, and here we go, she has brown eyes. Now, what we're gonna do is we're going to replace the eye color of this woman with the blue eyes with these brown eyes. And here's basically how you do it. I mean, there's a lot of ways to do it, but one way is to use the color replacement tool, which is found right down here. The color replacement tool is under the brush tool in Photoshop CS2, and I believe it was under the healing brush tool, right, in Photoshop CS. So what the color replacement tool does is let you basically sample one color and replace another with it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move our little cursor, and I'm gonna zoom in so you can see here. There we go. See how my cursor, there's a little like plus sign in the middle? What you're gonna do is move that over the color that you want to sample. Let's get a nice brown, right? A nice brown shade here. And you would option click on Mac or alt click on PC. See how the cursor changes to the little eyedropper and it samples that color? All right, so now it's got her eye color. Now we're gonna go to the other image and we'll zoom out a little bit. And all you're gonna do is let's make the brush a little bigger. You can change the brush sizes by using the bracket keys on your keyboard. The bracket keys are next to the letter P, or that actually they're to the right of the letter P. The right bracket makes your brush larger and the left bracket makes it smaller. We'll make it a little larger just so you can see how this works. Then you're just going to click in the blue area of her eye and it just selects that area. So it's kind of like, think of it as like a magic wand for the eye. And look at that, you just go over to the eye and notice how it's not, even though the brush is larger, Okay, even though the brush is larger, it didn't change the color of her eye. That's because it only changes the color of what that little cursor is over. Now, if you were to stray off of her eye and move that little, tiny little, like, plus sign cursor onto her eye, then it will change the color of her eye. So, not good, let's undo that. There we go. But that is a quick way to change colors using the, there we go. Kind of distracting to see the other photo there, isn't it? Right behind there to change colors using the color replacement tool. So the next thing in time you have a car, you want to change the color of something else, this is the tool to grab. It's great for changing eye color and things like that, but it changes colors of just about anything. Interesting about the color replacement tool. Back in Photoshop CS, it had another secret thing that it did. The secret thing that it did was it removed red eye. So if you're using Photoshop CS, grab the color replacement tool, open up a photo that has some red eye, click it right on the red eye and watch what happens. You don't have to sample any place else, just go and hit it. Now, in Photoshop CS2, they added actually a red eye tool, so you don't have to worry about it, but little thing for CS users there. Does the red eye tool make that noise for you instead? It does make that noise <laughs> for you, which is, which is very, Any very tools nice. that make noises, I'm into. <laughs> All right, after the break, we're gonna have a special guest tip from David Zeiser. We'll be talking about who David Zeiser is, what cool stuff he does, and we'll see his cool tip. Coming up, of course, we also have Matt's tip, the giveaways, contests, and more cool Photoshop stuff. Right after this, you're watching Adobe Photoshop TV.
Hi, Photoshop TV viewers. I'm Chuck Peters from Digital Juice, here to tell you about Juice Drops. Juice Drops are royalty-free collections of high-res graphics delivered as layered Photoshop files that you can remix however you like. We have 40 volumes in a variety of styles and themes, each with 100 Juice Drops, and we have new volumes on the way. We're offering the first 1,000 copies of our newest volume, Pastel Sketch, for just $69, regularly $249. You can preview every juice drop in all 40 volumes and learn about our bundle pricing at digitaljuice.com. All righty, we are back, and uh, I want to talk a little about our, our special guest. We have David Zeiser. Uh, David Zeiser actually stopped by the NAP headquarters, and if you ever stop by the NAP headquarters, then you're a Photoshop <laughs> person, and we put you to work Recruit immediately. You. Recruit and, you. Uh, so what we did was, now David is, I don't know if you know David, but uh, you probably do, but if you don't, he teaches at Photoshop World, and uh, he's just a brilliant instructor. Every time he teaches at Photoshop World, he, literally, standing room only, people just love him. He is a brilliant wedding and portrait photographer. He's kind of known for his wedding work, and he's just... Just a great guy and a brilliant instructor. And we asked him to do something kind of cool. And he said, "Does it? do I have to do Photoshop? Now, he teaches Photoshop all the time. We said, because he, he says, I've got a little neat little camera flash thing. And we said, a camera flash, flash thing. <laughs> Absolutely. Of course. So David's going to show you a little thing. We, we pulled uh, Larry Becker, our NAPS executive director, made him be the model. And uh, <laughs> David's got a very, very cool tip for getting better quality uh, flashes when you're shooting, you know, events and things. Cool. So uh, take a look at Mr. Zeiser, and uh, we'll catch you guys in a minute. Thanks, guys. I am thrilled to be here in the studio with David Zeiser, world-famous wedding photographer. And speaking of wedding photography, he's got a great tip for us. David? Thanks, Larry. Thanks, Scott. You know what? When you think about wedding photography, there's a lot more shooters out there than there ever have been before. Anybody can go out and buy their digital 35s, put a flash on top of it, and automatically they're a wedding photographer. And the way a lot of wedding photographers are shooting these days, they have the flash pointed right at the subject. In fact, let me just run through the three kinds of wedding photographers out there okay. shooting. So wedding photographer, the, the guy out there shooting the job, or the lady out there shooting the job, is just flash on camera pointing right at the subject. They take the first, the first photograph. Now we have the intermediate shooter mm -hmm. out there, too. Now the intermediate shooter, a lot more wise, a lot more savvy, they're going to take this flash and they're going to bounce it off of a ceiling. That's how the intermediate shooters are out there shooting. And then, Larry, we have the advanced shooters out there as well. They know that there's this little fill flap right in here, and they throw that up there, and now they are good to go and really take a lot of photographs. I feel like I've already gotten better. <laughs> but you know, The thing is, is that it's still creating just this one-dimensional flat lighting on the subject. But I want to show you how we can really just, with a, a minor change of the direction of the flash, create a beautiful direction of light on our subjects, and I'd like you to be my model okay. for it, if you don't mind. Let me ask you to just back up just a bit. We're going to do the regular Joe wedding photographer right here. Take photograph number one. And you're looking pretty good in that one, but let's go to our intermediate shooter with the flash right up here. Oh, that looks ever so much better. Now let's go to the advanced shooter right here. Here we go right here. And when you look at these three photographs, you can still see nothing but just a flat directionless light source coming in on the subject. Here's what I want to suggest, is that if we take this flash right here and we just turn it, and bounce it off of a white surface, what happens? It actually gives us a direction of light coming in from off camera. And if I was in the studio taking your portrait, the, uh, the umbrella, the umbrella would be right in this direction here, bringing a direction of light on you, creating a highlight next to a shadow. And that highlight next to a shadow creates detail, depth, dimension, and color saturation. Let me take one more photograph with the flash pointed over here at the white wall. And we take this photograph right here. And bingo, we got a great looking photograph of you where you can see highlight next to shadow, and it's just a, nice look, a much nicer looking portrait. You know, that, that's never happened to me before, a nice looking portrait. Thank you, David, I appreciate that. Now Thanks, tell me Larry. what you're doing these days. Well, I'll tell you what, we got a great tour kicking off, and this whole thing about uh, wedding photography, about digital photography and so forth, really addresses the fact of how we can make our photography much more exciting, much more beautiful than, than it has been before. We talk about putting direction of light on our subjects. Uh, it's called the Digital Wake Up Call, and it starts April 17th. We're doing 43 cities around the country. We're going to be talking about lighting, posing, composition. We're going to talk about how to get the best kind of pictures out of your digital cameras. We're going to talk a little bit of wedding. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about Photoshop for wedding photographers. We're going to talk a little bit about digital design. And we're also talking a lot about marketing and sales as well. It's four hours in the evening. We have several great sponsors on board, and you can find out more about it at digitalwakeupcall.com. The, the web address again? It is digitalwakeupcall.com. Great. Thanks so much, David. I really appreciate it. Thanks for taking my picture. Back to you guys. All right. Thanks, uh, Mr. Zeiser and, and Larry, for, <laughs> for that matter, uh, for the tip. Very, very cool stuff. 
They're both going to be at Photoshop World. Of course, David is one of our instructors there, and Larry's always doing something, hosting something, Absolutely, or yeah. introducing something great. So join us in September, September 7th through the 9th in Las Vegas, Yep. where, among other things, we'll be doing attempting, once again, yes. taking our lives in our hand and attempting to do a live episode. Another live calamity. Adobe Photoshop, Photoshop TV. TV. <laughs> so come see us. Dave will be teaching. I'll be teaching. Of course, Matt will be there, and every and Photoshop instructor in the world you can think of, including some brand new instructors yes. who've never taught there before, people like Jeff Shiwi is going to be there. Awesome. Russell Brown is back. Lots of cool stuff. And uh, go to photoshopworld.com for the latest and uh, hope you'll join us out there. That'll be tons and tons of fun. You bet. All right, now it's time to throw over to Matt in the Action News Storm Team Center for the latest in Photoshop news. It's Photoshop news from the Action News Storm Team with Matt Kluskowski. He's rocking the house key. This week's news is brought to you by Peach Pit Press. If you go to peachpit.com forward slash Photoshop TV, you'll see that each week they have a book up there for you. You get 35% off of that book plus free shipping in the U.S., so go check it out. All right, so first up in the news this week, uh, Jay Mazel, a buddy of ours, Photoshop World instructor, he's got a new gallery up there. It's called Retrospective, and it's going to be at the Hallmark Museum for Contemporary Photographers. So as always, we'll put links to this on the photoshoptv.com website. Also, uh, Bibble has released a new application, or, or a new version of the application, it's called Bibble 4.7, and it's a raw workflow application, but they've built upon their Noise Ninja technology, and they've also added this image clear technology to it that's great for image correction, so you can go check it out on their website. Next up, uh, a couple news about uh, some of our Photoshop TV co-hosts, as well as some uh, other people out there. Uh, Dave Cross is going to be in Milwaukee on May 24th, and he'll be in Seattle on May 3rd. So if you see Dave Cross on Photoshop TV, you want to go check him out out there, you go to photoshopseminars.com. Also, Ben Wilmore will be on the road in his Photoshop for Photographers tour, and Ben will be in Philadelphia on May 1st. Also, Deke McClellan's got a brand new tour out there. It's called the Photoshop Masters Tour. So you can go check out Deke. He'll be in San Francisco on May 4th. Last thing is, we get a lot of emails from people who want to put their galleries onto the web. Well, Commotion has released a new product. It's called the Web Gallery Wizard. It's got a lot of great templates for getting your photos and getting your images onto the web. So, as always, we will have links to all the news on PhotoshopTV.com. Thanks, and back to you guys. All right, thank you, Matt, for the entertaining and informative Photoshop news. As, as always. As always. And now... Holy cow, Matt's, <laughs> Matt's back here on the set. Whoa, that was fast. It's a long trip from all the Storm the way, Team all Center. All the way from the Storm Team News Center. You can almost well. hear the screeching wheels as the van <laughs> yes, drove up. As the van <laughs> drove up from the other side of the studio. Hey, well, uh, Matt, it's contest time. Can you tell us uh, some important contest stuff? I can. You know, we use Viper technology over in that <laughs> Storm Team I know news. you do. It's a Viper. A Viper. All right, contest. I have no idea. Oh, we need a question from last week. Yes. So, last week's question was... What would cause your cursor to look like this? See a little screen that pops up on the, the video here? To this. So there's, there's a little key that would cause yeah. this to happen. Actually, what that is, is that's the cursiary virus that <laughs> infects it, Photoshop. It is not the cursiary oh, virus. It's if not, you answer sorry. that, then which Scott tried to answer, he was wrong. He did not win. Uh, the answer is the caps lock key. So if you accidentally have the caps lock key down, Darn, that would cause your cursor to look like that. Gets them every time. Now, we have our winner, and our winner awesome. is Janina Sharkey. So congratulations to Janina. You will win hey, lots of stuff. She used to be in a band with that name, Janina <laughs> Sharkey. Yes, sir. and the Sharkettes. <laughs> oh, he's back. <laughs> he's back again. Dave, it's two for two. Wow. <laughs> For this week's contest. Yes, this quickly, week, quickly. Over there, back to Dave. Dave, what's the contest? Fast. We have several things uh, for this time around for the prize. We have, first of all, a signed copy, I'm sure it will be signed, of the best-selling iPod book by Scott Kelby. Yeah. Uh, one of the top-selling books there is in computers in general, let alone on the iPods. So that will be one of the prizes. And also... I've got the coolest thing that I've seen in a long time, the new look. This is from Logitech, and it is a device. It's for Photoshop. I mean, Photoshop users are going to go nuts over it, but you can also use it with, with Illustrator and InDesign. InDesign. Mm -hmm. But this is the baddest thing, and, and we're going to talk about it more. Not We can't do it on this episode, but we're going to do a whole thing on it in a later episode. But, but go check out Logitech.com. Go check out their website and watch the little movies, and you will go buy one of these for everyone you know. It is the baddest, coolest little thing. For Photoshop ever. It makes you cool and fast. 
cool and what fast. Uh, we've also got a NAP membership. So if uh, cool or magazine, you get a NAP membership, you get the magazine. Uh, one year NAP membership, and that's by popular request, actually. A lot of people have been asking us. Yeah, why don't you give, give away, away NAP, NAP memberships? memberships and that's what we're doing. I don't know why, but we just don't. <laughs> yes. So uh, you, we get a NAP membership for one year. If you're already a NAP member and you win the contest, then we'll just extend your membership for another year. Excellent. Cool. All right. Okay. So I guess well, we need to ask. Oh, and wait, wait. You get, they get one more prize. Oh, the big, gosh. big, big, big prize. The big, big oh prize gosh. is, of course, you get a full conference pass to the Mac Live right. conference, which is coming up in New York City. Will I be teaching there? We hope to see you there. If you haven't been there, go to MacLive.com. Sign up and come and party with us in New York City. And it's cool. worth noting that it's not just for Mac users because the classes include Photoshop, Illustrator, and Design that really are uh, usable for both platforms, not just the Mac. Oh, yeah, the, the programs are all the same, of course. So come on down to the Javits and hang with us in New York. It's going to be a blast. MacLive.com. If you're not going, you're not cool, right? <laughs> all right, yes. shall we ask a question for what's, this week? What's this week's question? This week's question is a very, well, I think it's going to be a little more challenging than perhaps in the past. Yeah, the cursor Where question. Where in Photoshop? Do you find an option called underwater? The caps lock key. Not yeah, the caps lock key. You hold the caps lock key. It's this week's question. Now, Matt, well, as always, we'll tell them how to enter. Yes, just send your uh, send your questions. <laughs> <laughs> send your answers. I'm coughing up here. Send your answers to uh, photo, go to photoshoptv.com. And along the right-hand side, you'll see a little link. And that link says question contest answer you'll find it it's over there you'll on the find right. it for sure <laughs> click on that link send us your answers by friday april 21st at 12 noon eastern and you too can be entered to win YouTube. how many times can you enter matt you can enter only once if you enter more times it will actually remove your contest aren't you so <laughs> fantastic keep that in mind all right well we'll be right back in just a moment when we come back we'll have matt's tip the long-awaited Matt Klaskowski tip. So we'll see you guys in just a minute. We'll be right back here on Adobe Photoshop TV. Alrighty, we are back. I'm Scott Kelby with Dave Cross and Matt Kloskowski. And speaking of Matt Kloskowski, how was that for a smooth segue? Uh, <laughs> you, have, you have a tip for us, don't you, Matt? My tip comes straight from the NAP Newswire, and that's uh, NAP's very own monthly newsletter. Uh, one of our prizes this week is a NAP membership. Now, not only do you get the magazine, not only do you get the weekly tutorials every week, but there's also a monthly newsletter. Now, Lisa Snyder is one of the writers for that newsletter, and she did a great tutorial on turning a photo into a sketch. Now, I'm going to kind of take it a little bit of a different way, and I'm going to show you not only how to turn it into a sketch, but I'll show you how to colorize it a little bit, too. All right. So... Now, is that actually a photo of Lisa? This is not a photo oh. of Lisa. Lisa is <laughs> slightly older than this. And, yeah, she's uh, like 11 now, isn't she? Yes. yes. All right. So, uh, first thing that we'll want to do here is I'm going to go up to the image menu, Go down to adjustments, and we need to take all the color out of here, so just choose desaturate. Now, I'm going to go to the filter menu, go down to stylize, choose find edges, and that makes the photo look really bad. And you could stop here if you want a really bad photo, but <laughs> we're going <Unadvisable>. to. <laughs> you push, might want to go to the next step. We're going to push on. And what you need to do here is go to under the edit menu and go to fade find edges. Now, if you ran a different filter, this fade, is going to say something different. So it's always going to say fade whatever the last filter that you used is. So mine says fade fine edges. The other thing about this is, ah, you know what, I'm going to say that for the end because I'm going to build it up. So anyway. Oh, so, this is awesome. So uh, awesome. choose fade fine edges and what this does is it opens up a little window here and we drop the opacity down to about 50% and then change the blend mode to linear dodge and there you get a nice little sketch effect, but if that's not the effect you're looking for, if it's a little too light, you can come down here and maybe change it to hard mix and you get a little bit of a darker effect here and you can always adjust that opacity because it's going to look a little bit different depending on what photo you use. 
You click OK and you're done. Now, there's one little trick you can throw in here, and let me just undo. And we'll go back to the color image, and instead let's duplicate that layer. Go do the same thing we did before, so I'm going to run through it fast here. Desaturate the top duplicate, then go to Filter, and since I already ran Fine Edges, I'm just going to choose the top option here. It runs it again. Again, under Edit, Fade Find Edges, we'll drop this down to 50%, and I'm going to go with the Hard Mix mode this time and maybe drop it a little further. Now we get our sketch effect. I'll click OK. Here's the trick. If you want to bring back some color into this to almost make it look like a color sketch, just go through the blend modes in here. Multiply is going to probably bring back too much color, but if you just cycle through the blend modes, you'll start to see that maybe some of them give you a little bit of added color back in there. Screen looks good, and I think uh, overlay might look good, a little bit too much color, but as you get down to the bottom, you'll start to find some really interesting options. Now, here's the thing I wanted to tell you at the end here. Fade, under the edit menu, when I went to that fade thing, if you do anything after the filter, that fade is not going to be available. So make sure you keep that in mind. Fade is, you can only fade as soon as you do it. You got to do it right after you do it. So if you run another filter or, or paint it or something, fade's going to go away. So that's my tip, guys. You, you guys are. We're, we're Yay! Yay! Thank you. That's the applause yes! I was looking Woo! for. Thank you. No, actually, okay. it's a very cool tip. It's a very I, cool I tip. appreciate it. And you throw a little fade in there and all. Hey. hey. I always think of fade as undo on a slider. It's exactly. And I think you said one thing in kind of passing. I think it's important to note it doesn't only work with filters. It's different tools. So if you use yeah. curves and you want to fade, yeah, or you levels can fade or curves. Paint brush, a brush, it's a, really a very healing brush. Way to exactly yes, definitely. To just pull the effects back a little bit. All right. Now that we've done a sketch uh, tutorial, I don't think there's anything else that can be done. I think it's all that <laughs> it's, can be done now is to end the, the show. The coolness stops the here. The coolness right? has we've reached the pinnacle of coolness. Hey, but before we do, you know, it, it's our tradition to leave you with three things to do before next week's show because there will be this this gulf of days where we don't do anything. So we will be back, of course, next week. But until then, we have three things for you. Dave, what is your project for them for this week? My project to check out is uh, Deke McClellan has recently joined our uh, select group of trainers that teach one-day seminars for us around the country, and he will be doing a seminar in South San Francisco on May 4th. If you go to photoshopseminars.com, you can learn about Deke seminars and all the other ones we do. Excellent. You can find Dave Cross on there, too, so if you want to see yeah. Dave Cross out on Dave the road. Dave Cross on the road. Of course, he won't be in Canada, as you well know. I've got one for you. Uh, mine is actually, it's, it's a blog that I'd like you to go check out because it's one of my very, very favorite blogs. If you're a photographer, you've got to go check it out. The, the web address is the online photographer at blogspot.com. And it's just, if you're into photography, it's just a great, great site all the way around. But in particular, one that really caught my attention this week, and I wrote about it in my blog, was uh, something that Yui Steinmuller is doing now. I've met Mu 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 <laughs> I've met Yui at Photoshop World. Nice the way he said that. I met him at Photoshop World. Really great guy, and, and just you know very very well known. And what he's doing is he's got a new idea for how to sell prints online. Basically, that was what he was doing before. He's now letting you download his prints and print them on your high end printer yourself. That's cool. Now, I, I know, but think about it. It's kind of edgy because you're taking, you know, the, uh, you know, the, you're giving the, thought, the digital file. You're giving the digital file to somebody else and saying, you know, you're allowed to print one. You know, you print a couple of test prints and then you print one final one. But you know, it, it, it's edgy. It's bold. It could be the way of the future. So go check out the the online photographer and make sure you read the article about you. It's very very cool. Cool. Well, and Matt. My, uh, my to-do this week is not edgy, it's not bold, and it's probably, <laughs> it's not going to change the face of the earth or anything like that, but I just, uh, I've just finished the, my book on the Photoshop Speed Clinic, and either there's a lot of really nice people out there, or people actually like the book, because I've been getting a lot of great feedback from people who want to do things faster. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, uh, this, uh, this week I got another blog for you, and it's by Jeff Tranberry. It's at blogs.adobe.com forward slash crawlspace and we always put these links up on the photoshop tv.com website so go check out Jeff's blog because Jeff is all about doing things fast he's got stuff on scripting up there but he's also got some cool stuff on actions and uh, 
just doing things fast in Photoshop. So cool. Hey, go check it out. Hey, Matt is too modest to say this, but Matt's book, uh, the Photoshop Speed Clinic, is about the hottest Photoshop book out there today. In fact, uh, uh, last week it wasn't just the number one best-selling Photoshop book. It got up to the number one best-selling of all computer books on Amazon.com. So uh, check it out if you haven't seen Matt's book. It's very, very speedy. If you want to get faster <laughs> in Photoshop, make more money, and do twice the work in half the time, check out the Speed Clinic book. Well, for myself and Dave Cross, back from Canada. Yes, sir. See you next time. And Matt, back from the Storm Team News Center. <laughs> yes, see you next time. Thank you guys for watching Adobe Photoshop TV. We'll see you next week. Adobe Photoshop TV. See you next week.